Alright guys, we're going to continue on with our web app. If you've been following this, and I hope you have, and you like this series, don't forget to hit the like, and also subscribe if um, you haven't already. Today we're just going to do some housekeeping, and we're going to continue to talk about inheritance of templates in our application. So when I say housekeeping, we added the login.html into our template right that we created in the last video we used our base.html to create a base well template for our content and then we just placed the content in the blocks that we created and so far we haven't done that for the user so I wanted to go ahead and do the same thing as we did in login.html so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically copy this top part and I'm gonna remove the head because if you remember uh, the heads all taken care of in our template why does this keep coming up no I don't I don't need those things so we're gonna put in the title something like create user okay and then at the bottom we uh, we need the end block All right we don't need this H whoops we do need the body, we don't need the HTML. So let me go ahead and run this and just make sure that it works. Yeah, cd into our Python directory and then now we can run Python API demo. Okay, so we'll run it and we'll take a good look and make sure if we go to create user now, we have the nav bar. Sweet. So another thing I want to do is I only I want to mess around with the nav bar. Let's go ahead and change the name of the application. And we're also going to change one of the buttons up here. Maybe I'll move it to the right. Uh, or maybe I'll keep it right here. And it's going to be a login button or a log off button. Or log out, I guess is, is a better way of saying it. And that's going to depend on if the user is logged in. So let's go ahead and go back to the base.html. And this is where our navbar is. And this is the you know bland where it says navbar, just like that. And we're going to put the name of our application, which I never really came up with the name. So feel free to name it whatever. But this is going to be our video game review. Pretty basic. I'm sure you guys can think of a better um, better name for your app than that, but that's just something I came up with. Video game review. And let's go ahead and get rid of uh, features and turn it into, or maybe let's get rid of the disabled for sure. Uh, link there. Okay. And instead of pricing, let's just have this as a block. And I'll show you why I have it as a block here in a second. Hopefully it'll make sense. Um, okay, whoops. So, uh, like I said, it can be whatever name, so we can say block log. And then at the end, uh, let's do end block. Let me make sure, let me think about this for a second. Let me make sure this even makes sense. Okay, this is what we're going to do. I, I think I'm going to do it a bit differently. So we're going to take this block, block log, we're going to cut it, we're going to paste it right here. And then the end block we're going to put at the end of this list item. And I'll show you why we're going to do this here in a second. Oh wait, I, I have a better idea. Okay. So instead of blocks, let's just ask a question. So if session, what did we make the session variable called? I forget already. Logged on. So session logged on is equal to true. And then instead of end block, we're going to do end if. Hopefully this ends up working as I expect it to. So we're going to have two scenarios. It's either going to be logged in or not logged in. Right? And if it's logged in, then we want the button to say log off, and then if they press that, it logs them off. And vice versa. If they're not logged in, we want the button to say logged in, and then if they click the button, 
it logs them in, right? or it takes them to the login screen, rather. Log off, it'll just run some code, take away the session variables, and then act like it's not the user anymore. Versus log in, it's going to take them to sign in again if they need to, or sign in for the first time, whatever the case may be. So let's go ahead and say if the session logged on is equal to true, in this case we want the button to say logged off or log out. I keep saying logged off. We can have an else. So it's the same deal. Um, we have the squiggly braces, curly braces, whatever, and then the two percents, and then we can say else, and then I'm just going to copy this and change this to login. So let's see if this even works. I am not 100% sure. Make sure everything's saved. Um, let's go ahead and test this and see if it even works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to slash login and I'm going to go ahead and log in. So coding 21 and password. So I should be logged in. Now if I go to create user, and uh, not, not the query string, just create user, you can see the logouts here. And I didn't notice, I should have, <laughs> uh, I should have just checked and seen if login was an option before we logged in. I didn't even notice. So let me go ahead, let me restart the local host. I mean, hopefully you guys caught it, but I didn't. What am I typing here? Python API demo. Okay. So let's kill this and let's go to the new one. Go to my other screen. And now let's go to create user because theoretically I shouldn't be logged in. And there you go. I shouldn't be logged in. I'm not logged in. And we know this because I now have login up here. So now we can use variables in our HTML uh, Python variables. <laughs> and do some really cool stuff with it, right? We can show that the user is not logged in or logged in, and now we can write the code and the code behind to say, okay, when they click this, so let's go ahead and go back to our base. And say, okay, when they click this, let's go to slash login. And then we'll have to create a route for log out. So I'm curious if I reload this, if it'll go. Yes, awesome, that's cool, really cool. So let's go ahead and in the back end, let's create a route really quickly for the logout. It's gonna be pretty simple. Let's put it after the login. So if we do app dot route, and this one is going to be dot logout, and the method is going to be just a get. I believe. I can't think of why we would need it to be a post. And then let's just have our dev and call it logout. And this is quite simple. Um, we're just going to change the session variable for logged, logged on equal to, or set it equal to false. We're not going to check if it is. Okay. And what else do we need? Oh, session user, right? Is it the other thing? Yeah. We're going to make it a blank string. Is that what we did? So when we check, yeah, that, I think that'll work. What is this mad about? Methods. I did it again. I think I did that before in another video. Let me rerun this. Get out. Okay, and then at the end, we are just going to return. Uh, we'll just go to like return uh, render template login dot HTML. And then in the future, after we log out, I'll just send it to the home page, and the uh, user can click login if they want to. But we don't have a home page right now. We don't have a index or 
anything like that yet. That'll that'll be coming up. So after I do that, after I create it, I can put that in here. Okay, so I think this will work. Let me let me try logging in again. So coding twenty one password hit enter. You'll see that changed, which is cool. And now if I log out, actually let me go to create user. Whoops, I guess I don't need that login. Huh. Now let me hit log out. Awesome, so it takes me right back to the login page. That's sweet. Okay, so we know it works. Awesome. So it's set logged on equal to false and it changed the user session variable to an empty string. That's basically all I want to show you today is how you can use whoops. Is how you can use a an if statement in Python and call that in your HTML. Really powerful and I think it's really sweet. So thanks for watching guys. I will see you all in the next one and uh Take care.